Now I'm going to chat more a little bit more because you're going to be speaking at uh, Social Media Marketing World 2017, which uh, a couple yeah. of days ago, uh, you know, Jessica, Jessica Rhodes of the of the now Interview Connections, uh, she she was here and she's going to be speaking there too. So, can you share with us about um, basically how do you got how did you get on the radar of a Social Media Examiner and and what was what was that process? Uh, I am so glad you asked that because I actually have a really, really good story about how to get invited to speak at major events like that. And that is, uh, is that I started, of course, so, you know, the whole thing, um, you know, about say, so in, in the world of consumer savings, I had really earned my stripes there. But in the world of social media and podcasting and, you know, and, and you know, business, that kind of thing. While I had an inspirational story, like I had kind of done the deal, like I had, I had content to talk about based on my own experiences. That's really important. Like go out and have some success in something and really, you know, again, find out what's the one thing that you're really good at. Maybe you're just a rock star when it comes to Pinterest. Great. Don't worry about the other social media platforms. And that's another thing too, is, you know, don't try to Come a rock star. It's it's impossible, right? Unless you have like a team and like, okay, you're our Pinterest people. You know, you're our Pinterest person. You know, that's your one job is just to, you know, really make us awesome on Pinterest. Like you personally are probably just going to need to pick one or two platforms and rock it. Okay. Anyway, um, so so when I launched, I had success in uh with working with the media and i had pitched another conference and i got the opportunity to be part of a panel that got to talk about how to create media success then that then led to another opportunity to speak on that subject and i really i paid my dues right and you start small and then i started doing a lot of podcast interviews um and, and in those podcast interviews, it would just be service, service, service. And I did small podcast interviews, right? Then eventually that led to an invitation because I had invested in a friendship with um, learning with Leslie, Leslie Samuels of Becoming a Blogger, his podcast. That's a decent sized podcast. And I really... You know, by then I had already done so many podcast interviews about how to get in the media that by then, you know, the interview went really well. Like there was, you know, there's really nothing that you can't ask me that is going to trip me up at this point. <laughs> like I have played the chess game of like teaching people how to get in the media so many times. Like I know this topic really, really well. So that's helpful. And so do 20 small podcast interviews, then start introducing yourself to the, the larger ones. Now, performed very well on Leslie Samuels' podcast. Leslie Samuels happens to be good friends with Mike Stelsner. Mike Stelsner said, hey, I heard that show with Josh Hellage. Can you make a connection? Because he did a really good job, and I haven't really talked about that subject in a long time. So he made the connection with Mike Stelsner. Now, when you do a big show like that, um, you go through like two or three pre-interviews uh, before you finally have the real thing. Um, Mixergy was the same way. Uh, John Lee Dumas, you know, they, you go through a lot of work to get to, uh, you know, where you finally record the big thing. So, um, so Mike Stelzner and I, you know, so his assistant, then, you know, we had a pre-interview with Mike and we kind of figured out what he was going to ask me. Um, and then I did the show and I did well on the show. Um, it was, it was not because, um, just because of the opportunity. It's because I practiced so many times before I had that opportunity show. And so, you know, I got all of the, you know, the vocal ticks out. I don't say, um, uh, I didn't, I, I, when I speak, I speak with a lot of confidence and I, I, I have very actionable steps. And so at the end of the, uh, at the end of the interview, Mike says, well, Josh, this went really, really well after we we're done recording is like, is there anything else, anything else I can do for you? And I said, well, Mike, it's, it's kind of been my dream to help out or speak or something at social media, uh, social media marketing world. And he said, well, um, I tell you what, you know, this interview went pretty well. Uh, feedback on this episode uh, and we have availability, then I'll, I'll, 
I'll let you know. And so knowing that, um, I was when the when the episode went live. Uh, first off, I knew when it was going to get go live, so I started letting all my people know. And I said, "Look, uh, I'm going to be on social media marketing, uh, the, the social media marketing podcast." And I started pre-promoting it. And then when it li went live, I promoted it, and I did every I did my part to promote that appearance. And you know, again, I don't know if that was probably just a, a drop in the bucket, but, you know, in, in terms of his overall audience, but he got good feedback. And so sure enough, I got that email. And when I got the email, Shaval, I, I, I started crying. I mean, it was, it was so humbling. And, um, you know, for someone like me um, to be invited to be able to speak at an event like that, it, it meant a lot to me. And, um you know, and, you know, it's one of those things where you say, you know, well, who am I to be invited uh, to be able to do something like that? And again, you might be, you know, someone who's watching us, Cheval might say, you know, it's, are you kidding? That's not that big of a deal. That's great. Maybe you have other things that are a big deal for you. And you'll get to that point where you're like, wow, I mean, what an, what an honor that is for me to be able to do that. And so, um, so yeah, so I, you know, I had that opportunity, but, you know, again, it's like, you know, when I trained for and ran a marathon, well, to run a marathon, if you're not an avid long distance runner, it, it takes a lot of work to get there. And it takes, you know, minimum three months of training in order to be able to go from, you know, being able to run a 5k to being able to run a marathon, you just have to work your mileage up. And you have to work up, you know, how far can you run in one event. And so when you cross the finish line, you're not crossing the finish line for just that one event that what you're crossing the finish line is the, you know, the hundreds of miles that you've run in preparation for that one race day. So it's kind of like that same thing. Um, so when I get to speak at Social Media Marketing World next month, it's it that is a, a, a significant moment that really reflects years and in my case is decades of preparation awesome awesome now uh three more questions um i know i asked i better before, i better start but... answering a lot faster <laughs> we're never gonna oh, no, get no, no, that no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no 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 this is good but actually um you know yeah this is this is a question i know i asked this before but i you know if you had the opportunity to interview anyone you admire past or present actually let me just say present right now you know for your show who would that person be uh so i don't really so for my podcast uh you know i don't really do a lot of interviews who would i like to learn from you know here's the amazing thing um i i I, I, I think about that question from time to time, and I think, you know what? I, I do get to hear those leaders all the time. I feel like, you know, I, I don't have a really big pent up demand for interviewing somebody because I'm such a voracious consumer of information already. So, you know, when I want to learn something, from somebody about something, I I obsess over it. Like I, I remember, like, and I haven't really even done much with it, but I wanted to learn about like how to be a rock star on YouTube, and I probably consumed more than sixty hours worth of podcast and video content about how to be a rock star on YouTube, really just because I wanted to learn about it. And ultimately, I decided that that, that wasn't the right moment for me to pursue that, um, just given what I was already focused on. But um, that's that's kind of what I do. So if I want to learn from, you know, Michael Gerber, for example, well, Michael Gerber was just on My Wife Quit Her Job podcast with Steve Chu. Steve Chu, I love his show. And so I am constantly searching for the teachers that I love and respect. I want to find out what they're producing. And because they believe in giving and all the teachers that I follow and I, I believe in, I support, they're really big on giving. They produce a lot of good content. 
I consume. Now, the way I learn, I don't do a whole lot of reading. I just, you know, and I, I do a crap load of listening. <laughs> like so, uh, but for me, it fits with my lifestyle because if I'm ever driving, if I'm ever running, if I'm ever in a place where I can multitask, I am always listening and learning. Always, always, always learning. And, um, you know, that means that, you know, I make, I have to make hard decisions because I also love music. Um, but I know that music is good for a certain thing. But, um, you know, I want to make sure, you know, they always talk about your, you know, make your commute, uh, your drive time university. That's an old network marketing thing. <laughs> um, but, you know, you just, you know, you just, I, I can, I, you know, I've listened to tens of thousands of hours of, of, uh, of, of education. That's just, uh, it's, it's a part of who I am. So in it, long answer to your question, I, I, I really can't even think of, of who I would need because I've already been voraciously, you know, I'm listening to a lot of inspirational stuff right now, like Joel Osteen, you know, for right now in my life, like I'm really, really into a lot of what he talks about and teaches about positivity and, you know, really attracting, um, you know, all the blessings that, that God wants for you. And, you know, so I'm really into that right now. And, you know, it's a phase. I'm sure I'll kind of move on to other stuff. I also listen to tons of stuff about Facebook advertising because I have amazing teachers. Um, the Art of Paid Traffic, Amy Porterfield, um, they are producing such valuable content. Um, man, I'm covered. You know, I'll let them do the interviewing. <laughs> I just tell, I'll just talk with my friends like Jabal. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Now, so now where can people find out more about uh, your your company up NPR and also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your uh, where they can find your speaking if they're going to be attending social media marketing world 2017? Yeah. So it'll be uh, Wednesday afternoon. I'll be speaking at 4 p.m. So if you're in San Diego, social media marketing world, uh, I, I am so looking forward to connecting with you there. Um, other than that, you can just Google me. You can see exactly the kind of work that I do. Uh, I do a lot of it. Um, and, uh, and you could, if you want to hit me up on Twitter or go to upendpr.com, I'd, I'd be, I'd be honored if, if you'd check out, um, some of the, the work that I, that I produce. I do a lot of pro bono stuff. Uh, I am all about service and I am all about, uh, creating uh, and leaving a legacy. Awesome. Well, Josh Elledge, again, thank you for joining me on What's the Word. I'm truly honored. Uh, do you have any final words uh, for our audience? Um, yeah, so keep, you know, what you're doing right now, keep, keep doing more of that. Um, because uh, that is, you know, like, you know, much like myself, you know, just the more that we could, hey, look at that, get rid of that. Sorry. Here, now I'm zoomed into full picture. <laughs> Finally, at the very end of the uh, conversation. Oh, well. Um, yeah. You know, surround, yourself with, surround yourself with experts and uh, always be growing. Um, you know, you might, TED Talks might bore you to death. TED Talks, for example. It's like, you know, I listen to a TED, like I never get excited about a TED Talk at, at the beginning or like reading the title, but usually by the end, I'm like, Man, that's pretty good. So you know what? Feed yourself daily and really commit to listening and watching teachers like Chabal who are interviewing great people. Um, you just always, always, always invest in yourself because the more you invest in yourself, the more valuable you become to other people, other people, other potential customers, your children, your spouse, you know, other people in the world. And so, um, you know, become a student so that you can become the teacher. Awesome, Josh. Well, thank you again for being here. And what's the word? Awesome, Jamal. Thank you. What's that?